One of the things I was super excited about for Tiny Tape Out 6 was the analog projects. If you take a look at the shuttle stats, we got 27 out of the 32 possible slots filled, and that's these green ones here. And so for this little video, I thought I would show you one of the projects that I made, which was this R2R DAC, which is a mixed signal design. So that means it's got this um, analog bit here, where an R2R DAC, you can tell these are the two R's because they're twice as long as the R's, and they're arranged in such a way so that when you provide zeros or ones in the top here, the digital, it uh, adds up all the voltages and then you end up with the analog out there. And then it also has this um, digital block here and that's generated by open lane. And in this video, I'm just gonna talk through the very top level basics and show the tools that I use to create this design. So the work starts in X scheme, drawing out the schematic. So this is the R2R DAC schematic. And then once you have this, you can build it into a test bench. So this is the test bench. I've got two of them instantiated here and one is from that schematic. And the other one is the circuit that's been extracted from the layout the, that I showed you the 3D layout earlier. So we can simulate this now with NG Spice. And then we have the results here. So I've got bits six and seven of the digital input just showing there and then how they all get added together to create my output. And you can see it's not a, a great D2A. I've got this uh, little spike here. It's quite interesting that the, the circuit that is extracted from the layout also has that same issue there. But the schematic and the layout match each other pretty well, so I was happy. So then on the digital side of things, I've just got this uh, bit of Verilog here and it is super, super simple. It's just a counter basically putting out the, eight, the lowest eight bits of the counter to drive the R2 R DAC. And I can also load a divider to slow it down. Um, that's the built-in test mode. And then if I set X data high, then I can drive the D2A externally. So then I can give it an eight bit input and the output will be the analog output. I use open lane. And that gives me um, the uh, digital block here that I'm just showing you with K layout. So then the next step is to insert the R2R DAC and the digital block together. And I'm using magic to do that. So this is the top level. There's the digital blocks, so there's the analog block and I can load them. Um, the digital connections are all up at the top here. And then the digital drive goes to the DAC and then the output goes and that's the same as the, that layout is the same thing that we saw on this 3D version. To make sure that the layout matches the schematic, I also have a top level Verilog file that basically instantiates my digital block instantiates my analog block and then joins them together. And this is telling it where everything is connected so all the wires are done. And then I have a rule called LVS that uses a tool called NetGen. And what that does is it extracts the netlist from the uh, layout and compares it with the spice file and the gate level Verilog that I've got for the digital block. And if they both match, that means that the thing that I've drawn matches my design intent and it should match the simulation. And there we go, we get a good result there. So then the final thing to do is to simulate it all together. And that is a problem sometimes because NG Spice is good for analog stuff, but it's very slow to simulate a long time of digital stuff. So NG Spice 42 has a new feature where it can do co-simulation with Verilator. So you can build this uh, executable like this. And then I have this .so file. 
and then I have a a circuit here where I instantiate the Verilog module along with its uh, executable that I just made with ng-spice and Verilator. I include the spice for my R2R DAC and instantiate that. I give it a clock, I give it a reset, and then I just do a transient simulation and plot the output. So to do that, I can just do ng-spice, run that, takes a little bit of time. Not too long though, and then I can see I get that waveform that I was expecting, but this time the R2R DAC is driven by that digital block. So that's a very brief overview of the tools I'm using for mixed signal design. I think mixed signal design is a really exciting and interesting new frontier that we have access to with the open source tools. And now that Tiny Tape Out supports it, I'm hoping to see a lot of really interesting and cool designs. So if you want to put in a mixed signal or an analog design, then uh, check out the analog template for Tiny Tape Out 7. Tiny Tape Out 7 is open now and it closes on the 1st of June. And if you're interested in a guided course that takes you all the way through to do it, an analog or mixed signal tape out, then leave your name for the 0 to ASIC analog course waitlist, which I've linked down in the description below. Have a great weekend.